Yeah, so these are the things that um, you know uh, we should learn huh, from Buddhist monks. <laughs> so to become a Buddhist monk is not easy. The education, the education is completely a very different one. Samana has this four meaning, right? The first one, Samana is one who practices diligently. Okay, and then the second one, you know, he accomplished, uh, you know, in in the spiritual path, right? Just a kung lao la ha. And the third one, stealing of mind. Stealing of mind here referred to his mind is is very calm, right, and very peaceful. Um, he suppressed the distraction of thought. Okay. And the fourth one, cultivation of sila. Samadhi and Panya. Okay, that is to say, you know, we talk about Sila, Samadhi and Panya. This is the, the middle path, right? Discovered by the Buddha. They practice the form, they, they practice, they follow the noble effort path, right? Consists of Sila, Samadhi and Panya. And then, you know, through which he get rid of, uh, you know, the, the, the desire, the anger and delusion, etc., etc. So you see, the sim, Samana has this four definition. In the Chinese Agama text, and we look at this, uh, you know, the Indian society, right? The samanas, like Buddhist monk, right? Uh, they also play a multi multiple role. Like for example, uh, beside he, uh, religious teachers, right? Uh, he was also a philosopher. <laughs> you know, those samanas are very good at, uh, you know, uh, giving talk, <laughs> and then. And you look at the Samanas also, they are very good social workers, right? And then uh, also a counsellor, right? And people come to, the, come to the Samanas, you know, to ask for help, right? Um, and this is also a spiritual healer, you know? I like to use this word because like, like in ancient times, you know, people come to Buddhist monks for all kind of cure, right? They said, oh, today I'm not feeling well, you know, can you do me a blessing? And then after the monks are chanting, 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 after a while, they said, that, oh, I'm feeling better now. All right. Very powerful, isn't it? You know, there, there is a reason behind, you see. Many years ago, uh, I was uh, asked to use a sound therapy. It means that uh, they want me to chant the Pali Suttas, okay? And they said how effective of the chanting of Pali Suttas. And then, of course, the Pali Suttas, for ordinary people, they don't know what's the meaning of you know the contents of this thing but Pali suttas mean you have to chant it properly right and if you chant it that is using the sound you see so a lot of uh, researchers uh, said uh, by listening to the sound you know you have your mind calm and peace okay so there is this uh, uh, we call it the energies behind right somebody you know who can whose voice is very is very energetic right very vibrant huh? when you listen to this kind of uh, chanting you feel good and then once you feel good, then all your sickness, uh, all your, your problems cured immediately. Thai monk will introduce the Thai chanting. And then the Burma, you know, we introduce the Burmese chanting, similarly to Sri Lankan chanting. But we are Chinese, you see, we can hardly to follow all these different tone and different uh, chants, you see. So we are introducing, I, I wouldn't say a Chinese chanting, but a uh, uh, proper one. Uh, huh? So that, that we Chinese can follow, right? So, but of course we follow these five sounds. You see the five sounds? You see, there is this articulation when you do the chanting. So you have to chant mindfully. As you chant, you articulate the sounds properly, right? And then, and then the, the articulation of sounds coming from five different parts of the, the articulation, right? You had the sounds from the throat, right? You had the sounds from the gutter, you had the sounds coming from the cerebral, you know, and then you had the sounds coming from the dental, yats the same, oh? and you had the sounds coming from the level sounds, like um, pa, pa, the kind of sounds, you see. So when you articulate these sounds properly, it, it brings a very soothing, uh, you know, the tranquility, you know, to, to the body and mind, because it transmits a very soothing energy to your body. Okay? So in that way, after listening to the sound, you feel peace. Uh, so ancient monks, uh, they are, I think they are well versed in this chanting so that they know when people come to them, oh, okay, you have discomfort in your, in, in your body, okay, now you, okay, you go and chant these sounds. Uh, uh, it's basically a sound. Uh, 
So slowly, slowly, this kind of sounds are eventually become a mantra. Mantra, you see. So mantra, some you cannot translate the word. It's just a sound. Okay, by 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 reciting this sound, you feel good. Okay, that's why you call it anusati. Anusati means uh, you know recollection. You know you 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 recite it continuously until you feel good. Uh, so there is this uh, healing effect on the mantra. Okay, so we said that monks has that uh, capacity, right? To give you, you know, certain certain chanting, huh? uh, so it's kind of a healer, right? So the Buddhas also uh, instructed his disciples, uh, you know, to always pay respect to the Buddhist monk. When a when a lady uh, come to the temple, come to see the monks, right? He is encouraged to do these four things. Okay, so this is the first one. Right? The first one is associating with good people. Sapurisa Sansevo. Right? Um, and then, okay, it says, if it also says, uh, when associating with good people, right? Here, the good people refer to the Buddhist monk. Okay? And then, uh, and then you have to do these six ways. Okay? Six ways. Huh? One should respect, one should attain with honor and respect, one should venerate. One should praise, one should respect, one should reverence. To me, they are more or less the same. It's just only different Pali words. Huh? So you can see that when you see a monk, right? uh, come close to them, right? and then respect. Right? So there is this emphasis of respect and honor right? to the monk. Huh? And the emphasis is here. Yeah, the first one is associating with good people. So when you come to the temple, uh, you have to associate with the with good people. Here refer to the Buddhist monk. Huh? Uh, Buddha never say, you know, don't disturb Buddhist monk because they want to practice. No. Come to the temple, you have to, you know, associate with the good good monks there, and good people there, right? Associate with Buddhist monk. Uh, that's why, you know, sometimes um, of course it's an excuse to say we we you know don't disturb us, uh, we practice. But it is not so, you know. It is not the case. Oh. So this is why monks' roles huh, is not easy. And the second one, okay, is now it says that when you come to the temple, right, uh, you have to listen to the true teaching, right? Sadhama Savana. Okay? Uh, so now it's not easy for monks to give talk now today. Okay, when you talk about the true teaching, what is the true teaching? You see, we know that the you know the Buddha discovered under the Bodhi tree, the four noble tree, and discovered the noble and four path. I would consider this as a true teaching, and the, the true teaching means uh, uh, this is a teaching discovered by the Buddha himself, not shared by others, and that it is only through which right the four noble truth and noble and four path won't be able to realize the enlightenment. Okay, I consider this as a true teaching. All right. And then you also have to, to be a proper attention. You only so manasikaro. Okay? So what is this? When you talk about the proper attention, it means that you have to reflect the teaching. Okay? Again and again. Ponder the teachings again and again, right? So that you know you can clear your doubts. Huh? First time practice is not enough, then you continue practice it. Oh, I got it. Huh? I feel it. Huh? You understand? First time practice is like that, you know, you struggle a lot, but you continuously apply attention, putting effort into it. Um, you didn't got huh? Yeah, so this is the meaning. Okay. So all right, and the fourth one is practicing at the garden with the teaching, right? Dhamma anu dhamma patipada. Okay, so yeah, so when we say, you know, the, the practicing in accordance with the teaching, if you practice, uh, you put into the practice all what the Buddha has said, all right. You follow this, the the you know gradually you know step by step, you know from simple, you know to the very profound, and then and then through the the practice of sila samadhi and panya, right? And finally, you will led towards the attainment of the sainthood, okay? Uh, you know from the sotapanna, you know sakadagami, anagami, and finally to the arahat. So, okay. So this is what we call you know practicing according with the teaching. So you come step by stage, especially when you come to the the, the path and friction. Okay? Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, anyway, I want to add on something also. When you talk about practice in accordance with the teachings on this uh, graduate stage, right? We know that uh, when you come to the temple, I cannot tell you immediately, okay? Uh, you practice a meditation because if I were to say it like this, then next time people don't come to medit don't come to the class because very profound, right? So like during the Buddha's time, many, many beginners come to see the Buddha. Buddha will start uh, giving talk on dhanas. What else? Sila. Okay? And then what else? Going to the heaven. <clears throat> yeah. So are you satisfied with this? Going to the heaven? But for beginner, yes. Beginner, beginner, yes. Like many other religions, the ultimate goal is to go to the heaven, right? So the Buddha said, yes, we Buddhists also uh, will go to the heaven, right? How? By doing this, uh, by practice uh, dana and sila, right? Then, but it's not enough going to the heaven. The Buddha will teach you, okay, on what they call the dangers. Dangers of what? Uh, yeah, the sensuality, the dangers of desire, the Buddha will talk about the eradication or the elimination of defilement by practicing uh, different different types of meditation. Okay, uh, that is only when your mind is ready. Okay, so Buddha will go into this level, right? And then the Buddha also talked about the renunciation of desire, the benefits of renunciation, not becoming a monk, but is to getting rid of desire. And finally, the Buddha's uh, uh, see our mind is ready, right? Receptive. Prepare, okay, with so much firm and conviction, right? So much sadha in our practice, then the Buddha will teach us the four noble truths. Yeah, so this is what we call the Anupubekata, you know, the teaching in the graduate stage. Now you can see the difference, isn't it? Yeah, so these are the things that, uh, you know, uh, we should learn huh, from Buddhist monks. <laughs> so to become a Buddhist monk is not easy. The education, the education is completely a very different one. Buddhist monk is not teaching you to earn money, but it's to teach you to attain Nibbana. So you have to come to see the Buddhist monk and listen to these kinds of teaching. Okay, 